Um, so just want to say hello and welcome um, to our Commit to Care webinar. Uh, my name is Monica Hernandez. I am a Senior Executive Military Enrollment Specialist here at Chamberlain. Um, and we've actually started this series to have our Chamberlain students and alumni share what it's really like to step forward toward a rewarding career in nursing. Um, nurses are needed now more than ever, and there has never been a better time to pursue a career in healthcare. Um, so this evening's um, event is super informal. Um, we are using GoToWebinar, as you all know. Um, so our attendees are not on camera, but our panel is. Um, so for our attendees, um, uh, what we're going to do at the end of the uh, Q&A or of the, the panelists Q&A, um, we will ask that you launch your questions tab and you can type in your questions. Um, so you can ask our alumni and current student um, questions about the program. And we also have um, our panelists um, from admissions and student services that I'll introduce here um, in a moment. So uh, first wanna go ahead and introduce uh, Lori Kaczynski um, is a chamber University student currently, also alumni Donna Castellani, um, as well as an alumni here to share with you on today's topic, again, which is uh, the work-life balance in nursing school. And I also want to welcome from our admissions team, Nicole Brennan, and from student services, Laura Ann Menzik, to help address our Q&A at the end. So welcome, everyone. Um, just want to uh, start off by um, asking Lori just to share a little bit about yourself and tell us about your experience so far at Chamberlain. Okay. Um, so I went back to school. This is my second career. And I graduated from nursing school with an ADN in December of 2019. Um, and started at Chamberlain in March. March is a new session, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I started in March and I will graduate with the BSN in December. I had quite a few credits from, I have a bachelor's degree in physiology. So I had quite a few credits that could transfer from that and then from my ADN. Um, awesome. And I'm thinking about going on to nurse practitioner also. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Yeah, so I, work, I work in the operating room um, and I love that. That's, I love my job. Beautiful. And you're graduating here pretty soon, right? Yes. Awesome, December. awesome. December. All right, thank you so much for sharing. And Donna, would you mind sharing, introducing yourself and sharing a little bit about yourself as well? Sure, I'm Donna Castellani. I live in New Jersey. Uh, I'm a Chamberlain alumni and I'm also an employee of Chamberlain. I'm a full-time faculty member in North Brunswick on the North Brunswick pre-licensure campus. Um, I started off much like Lori did, only I was an LPN. Then I went back and got my ADN. And then one day I decided to go back and do the RN to BSN with Chamberlain. I chose them because of the wonderful reception I got from student services when I made that first phone call to ask about their program. And uh, while I was in the RN to BSN, I was asked if I wanted to move into the bridge program. So I ended up actually doing the RN to MSN bridge program and I have an MSN in nursing education. Um, Within a few months, I had been contacted by student acquisition to inquire whether or not I wanted to do clinical part-time for North Brunswick campus. And I was like, what? There's a campus in New Jersey? Because like Lori, I had done the RN to BSN online, you know? So I drove 62 miles up to that campus to check it out. And they offered me a full-time faculty position and I took it five years and eight months ago. and I gotta tell you, you're not making a mistake if you come to Chamberlain. You're gonna get the education and you're gonna get the opportunities. Wonderful. Awesome, that's been quite a journey, Donna, with Chamberlain that you've had, that's awesome. Oh, Thank it's you not for stopped sharing. yet, trust me. <laughs> yeah, I can see that, awesome. All right, so we'll get started with some discussion from our panel um, and then we'll open it up for Q&A at the end. So we'll jump right in here. Um, we're gonna start talking a little bit about personal experience. So for Lori, um, what would you say is, or was your, your, or I guess is you're currently a student. So what was your 
or what is your biggest school work life challenge and how did you successfully resolve that? Oh gosh, I think the biggest challenge is um, trying to find time for myself to for self care um, between kids, work, school. I'm a single mom. Um, I have an extremely full plate, and it's it's hard to make sure that I'm taking care of myself with everything else that's going on. I do walk my dog for an hour every day. That's one thing that I do for him and for me. Um, but other than that, I really have to schedule time in. That's a big thing is keeping a calendar and knowing when I'm going to dedicate some time to studying, when I'm gonna take some time for myself. Um, that's the most helpful thing, I think, to resolve the, that problem. The calendar. Mm -hmm. creating a calendar okay awesome and how did you or how do you arrange your schedule like do you take one class two classes do you mix it up session by session um i've taken two classes every term um except over the summer for the july august i took one class i would have had one outline class no matter what and i thought that was the best time to take it because summer my kids are out of school and um, you know, it was a little bit harder to study with them being home and wanting to do things. So um, I do take two classes. I work full time and um, yeah, have kids and everything and lots of other life things going on all the time. So I understand how difficult it can be to stay in school. But I guess the biggest thing for me, because um, I do have some really hard stuff going on right now, I have some court issues with my ex and things like that. So um, I try not to look at the December graduation date. I really just focus on every week what I have to do and then even break that down into each day. And I know that if I can, if I can even just spend 30 minutes working on school one day, it's enough. I get it done by the end of the week. I mean, sometimes it feels like I'm never going to get this done by Sunday, but I I do get it done. I mean, even I took my kids to California and on a Sunday I was finishing a PowerPoint presentation in the airport bathroom because I had to add voice to it and I didn't want the overhead speaker. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> you know, I just um I really use my time carefully and I, I get the most out of the time that I have. And I get it done. And I actually wow. I love school, so <laughs> that's a part that makes it easier too. Yeah, definitely. And life is going to happen. You know, there's right. nothing we can do to stop it, right? So it's just a matter of, you know, and some things you can control and some things you can't. So if, if it's a situation where you can continue your education and just utilize your resources, making a personalized calendar and kind of looking at things day by day, week by week versus the end game, um, you know, focusing months ahead, it sounds like that's been a great strategy for you to get through the program pretty quickly and be successful. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, and Don, in regards to the Chamberlain experience, um, I know you did the on online format before. What, what was what was it about Chamberlain's, or yeah, what was it about Chamberlain's online format, or any features and um, with that that helped you balance your work and your personal life, and anything that stands out that you feel was the most helpful while you were taking those online classes? Well, first of all, I'm pretty old, so I want to clarify that because when I first started back, um, I I had been really, I used the computer to check my email because that's what we did back then. We didn't do all of this stuff back then. And I was very, very, very naive when it came to using a computer. So I see that now with some of my older students that are coming in, you know, to get their second degrees or their second careers. That's one of the things I struggle with too. So um, I, I think what the key is when you start is to kind of not put such a high price on your head. You know, sometimes when you go back to school and especially if you're an RN already and you're, you're back in the saddle, so to speak, you are driven. You're driven to do the best because that's what's expected of us as nurses. 
but you have to kind of set back a little bit. You have to learn to set limits. You have to uh, learn to say no, you know. Um, Lori, your story resonates with me because, you know, I also I was raising a family and trying to work full time and go back to school and Chamberlain fit with me. I was looking for something I could do online, even though I wasn't tech savvy. And the support that I got from Chamberlain to help me with that made all the difference. You know, they were patient. They were not salespeople. They cared about me. The professors cared, the online professors. You know, you do develop that rapport, which a lot of people are not used to and a lot of people don't think you do. But you actually do develop that uh, cohort, that family kind of feeling with the your fellow classmates and your professors. And I'll tell you, the professors I had couldn't have been better. They, um, I went through a very serious uh, um time during my MSN and I had a wonderful professor of the dreaded one of the dreaded courses and um, if it weren't for the fact that that man actually took it upon himself to arrange weekly meetings with me to kind of hold me together and keep me moving forward I probably would have dropped the course but um, that kind of support that kind of support you don't get from anybody and um, now that I'm teaching with Chamberlain the last five years and eight months, um, I, I can honestly say they don't talk the talk. They walk the walk, you know, and right from student services to admissions, you know, you're, you're taken care of. But I think when you're establishing that work-life balance, like Laurie said, the calendar is important, but also you have to know the magic word and the word is no, because you're going to have to set limits. You're going to have to realize that you are in school and your family and your friends are going to have to understand that. And you're going to have to say no sometimes. You know, I, I married into a big Italian family, my second marriage. Very hard to be known as Aunt No Show because of many times that I had papers or assignments that were due and I'd have to say no, I, I, I can't, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but setting the limits and knowing that it's a small piece of time for you big long life or reward get you through yes, it absolutely um it's funny because i was going to ask you to provide an example of a time when a prof uh, chamberlain professor or advisor helped you and you so you He's provided it was the, amazing he was from florida yeah. and he sat me down and said we're going to get you through this because he didn't want me to drop because i would have you know i was uh four weeks into it you know and he said you're, you're too close let's get you through Oh, that's awesome. That's wonderful. Do you remember which which Chamberlain resource, looking back, that you utilized the most and why it was, it was uh, important tool for you? Well, it was always student services, mm. you know, um, because they're the go-to. You know, they can direct you to anybody else if it's not them. They know where to get you. And, um, you know, when you call and you have, um, it's a little disconcerting because in online, you, you don't usually have one advisor assigned to you like they used to do in pre-licensure. Now everything's national. Um, but it didn't matter who I talked to. There was always somebody that, you know, right out of the mouth, I don't know, but I'll find out. I'll call you back. Mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, it's support that you need, especially when you're you've got such a busy plate you know when you're trying to juggle everything and you're right on the edge sometimes because i like i say to my students i've lived it too there are days where you're on the edge man you're like this close you want to take the computer and you want to throw the books you want to just say why am i doing this i'm happy with what i'm doing now i'm a nurse i'm working what am i doing you just got to just got to take a breath, you know, and know that that's kind of the growing pains, you know, everything good has growing pains to get there. And, um, but it's the support, it's the support team. It really is. It's not just the professors. It's not, it's your fellow classmates. Mm -hmm. It's student services, the admissions team. It's really, it's uh, the back backstage people that get you really motivated. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. 
Awesome, and I'm, I may have Laura share a little bit more about that at the end here as well um, on outreach to student services and, and what, what type of support they provide for our, our students. So, um, Lori, what Chamberlain online format for you? Any features that stand out to you that have helped you um, just in general? Like what's been the most helpful for you with the online format? Um, I think that the the most helpful thing has been by far the professors. They're just so helpful, mm -hmm. so encouraging. Um, and if I I have contacted different um, professors throughout the classes and they always get back to me and answer my questions within a day, which is great. Um, the feedback that they give me for assignments that I turn in is very encouraging, keeps me going. Um, one of the other things that maybe doesn't answer the question, but I just thought of that is so great for me is the eight week classes. Oh yeah. It's so helpful to know. I mean, I can count down eight weeks is gone in a flash. And I just, you know, every week I'm like, okay, I'm one week closer, I'm one week closer. And then I get two different classes. I can do this. Like, and also something that's just been so exciting for me is, I've been using the information that I've been learning <laughs> like in, yeah. um, in OR conversation. I've been able to talk about <laughs> US history and political science. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so awesome. yeah, it's been fun to, um, to learn more. I feel like the information that I'm learning at Chamberlain isn't just the same old, same old. Like the professors are really um, up on, what's happening in the world and they want to hear all sides of everything. I've never felt like there's anything I can't say. In fact, wow. I feel like they really welcome um, different sides of every issue and mm -hmm. exploring, um, you know, having a, a, a good conversation between two people who don't necessarily agree. Hmm. So I, I don't know, I really, I really appreciate and and like Chamberlain a lot. You know, Lori, it's funny that you mentioned that about the discussion because one of the things that I found most enjoyable about the online classroom experience was that you were you were conversing and you were collaborating with students from all over the United States and even outside of the United States. Um, I remember in um, when I was doing my master's practicum, I was very fortunate that one of the uh, Dr. Ra uh, Rachel Ingram at the time, she agreed to be my preceptor and I was her TA for one of her master's courses as my practicum. And we had students that were living in Antilles and oh, wow. she had to go to Grand Cayman to do her preceptorship because they needed a U.S. territory or a U.S. affiliated territory to do, be able to do the practicum. So she was making plans to move to Grand Cayman to move to her cousins for eight weeks, leaving her kids and her husband back in Antilles. Um, but it was interesting because you get a, a perspective from all over, you know, you, people in California and practitioners in Nevada and New Jersey and Minnesota and outside the U.S. And that's what brings that robust discussion. That's what brings that um that large world of nursing into that small tight community that we all know and love you know that that ability to share and get different perspectives from people was amazing to me mm -hmm. and um, even teaching on campus we are so diverse it's i mean i must have in one class i could easily have 10 different cultures and you know different backgrounds and different ages and the perspectives are amazing that you get it's just Absolutely. an enjoyable way to learn. So different from when I was in community college all those years ago. You know, so different where nothing against community colleges, but again, being old. When I went, I was quite surprised to see that sometimes right out of high school, students are not as vested in their educational process. You know, they're not um, adult learners. We like to drive forward, you know, we have that that internal motivation that comes with a little more maturity. And I think with the RN, the BSN, and the online programs, the MSN, the DMP, 
you're really getting a learning experience because everybody's really there to learn. You know, they want that, they want it. And it makes such a difference in, um, in your own experience. Also the Chamberlain Library, you know, going back to what you asked about resources, the mm -hmm. Chamberlain Online Library, unbelievable, unbelievable. One of the largest repositories of information that you can find anywhere. And um, you can even get Google Scholar through the Chamberlain Library. You don't have to pay for your articles. But, um, you know, it's just an amazing resource. You can learn APA format. You can make appointments with the librarians. Now everything virtual. You have virtual VCAS, the Center for Academic Success. You can find out everything you need to know. So it's kind of like, you you know, sit in your pajamas if you want, but you're learning. Yeah. Right. Um, one of the other resources that's great that you can get through Chamberlain is Microsoft Student Edition yeah. um, for Word, PowerPoint, Excel, all of those programs for free, which is amazing. It is. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We let our students know in admissions, like, hey, once you become a student, you have access to that. So I know a lot of students go out and buy computers and we're like, hold off on the Microsoft bundle. You know, yeah. you can get yeah. 365 here. Don't spend $100. Oh, <laughs> you know, know, so they love that that resource. And this morning, it's so funny, um, the alumni raved about the library, raved. And oh, great. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a great, uh, a huge, a hugely great resource to, uh, to have, you know, when it comes to doing your research, uh, narrowing down those, you, those databases. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I have to tell you, I teach right now. I'm teaching the first nursing course. I've taught all along the curriculum, but um, my forte is uh, NR103 transitions and then NR222 health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And we teach the students how to go into the library and move around in it and research. And we use an example that you can go to the library, check on the journals and just type in the word safety and you'll get 24,000 articles that come up. And then you narrow it, narrow it, narrow it. And you can go all the way down to about a hundred articles if you know the right keywords to narrow down. But when you think about just typing in the word safety and getting, honestly, it's probably 240,000 articles that can come up just with that keyword. So many databases, so many search engines and free. Yep. And uh, one of the things that was mentioned too is don't be afraid to call the librarian. You, um, the yeah. alumni yeah. Uh, per, uh, individual that was on this morning, they talked about how they spoke with the librarian over the phone and got some more <laughs> insight. Um, and we have a lot of tutorials and stuff on that too, but it's nice to speak with the live person as well. So I appreciate you bringing that up. So we're going to actually, um, transition to our final topic, which is our recommendations. Um, so for you, Lori, what is something that you wish you would have known uh, that maybe would have helped you, you know, work on that work-life balance before starting the program? Um, and then any best practices in addition to the calendar usage? Oh, gosh. Um, something I wish I would have known. <laughs> um, well, some of the things that Donna has said, I haven't really known so <laughs> um i guess <laughs> i wish i always learn i know and I, I wish that i had been utilizing student services a little bit more mm. um i haven't i don't really have time to just hang out on the website and see what resources are available and i've been doing online classes for quite a while now so i i you know, I get by with what I have and what I know, but there probably are things that I don't know that could be helpful that I still don't know right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than using a calendar, um, I, I don't know. I mean, for me, it's writing things down. I have to write things down. Even when I'm using a calendar, I, I write down what I've already done and what I've left to do for the week, every week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, there's more. Even though, you know, all of the books are electronic, everything is online, I'm taking virtual courses, I still have to write everything down on paper uh -huh. that I need to do so I can cross it off. Right. And there's, you know, it's a great feeling at having a list and crossing things off. <laughs> right. Very satisfying. Yes. Yeah. Great best practice. And Donna, what advice can you give someone who is maybe struggling with the idea of adding school to their schedule along with full-time work or may have a family? What are your thoughts? 
I think it boils down to what your idea of work-life balance really is. We had a little conversation about that earlier. Um, there is no magic formula for work-life balance. You cannot go by whatever anybody else's is because it's got to work for you. And for me, I get up very early in the morning. I hit things early. I get them done. I think it's the old newborn intensive care nurse in me. I got to get it done right away. But um, that works for me. And it works for me to get up on Saturdays and spend a couple hours on a Saturday morning when the house is quiet or to you know, on a rainy Sunday afternoon, you have to find the balance that's going to fit with your life. And if you find that balance, you're going to be able to do the program because it's amazing that sometimes the busier you are, the more productive you can be because you found the balance. You just don't know it. So um, I would say one of the, the tips I would recommend is don't go by anybody else's ideas. You know, um, your boss, your family saying, oh, my God, all you ever do is work. Oh, you know, if that's what's going to keep your stress level down, that works for you. And that's your work life balance. And also learn the word no, please, because and don't give them a reason. Just say, no, I can't. Because like Aunt No Show always says, if you give them a reason, they're going to come back and say, oh, but it's only a couple of hours. And then you got to argue. So, you know, um, yeah, I would say really just discover what your own sweet spot is for work-life balance. It's a misnomer because it's never going to balance. You just have to kind of keep it from tipping over and, and exploding. Um, and as long as you can do that, you're going to be okay. You really are. If I could do it, you guys could do it, I swear. And I agree with the weekend mornings, getting up early before anybody. Every weekend, I love that time. I get up and I drink coffee and I get work done. Yep, and it works, you know, who's to say that that's wrong, you know? When I go to work, sometimes I hear people say, you know, you've got to stop bringing work, you know, well, I'm in education, I'm working all the time. But, you know, you shouldn't be working on here. You should be taking some time. Why are you guys on with your students at 7.30 at night, your day programming, this, that, because it works. And because my stress level and my student's stress level is lower when we do what we got to do, mm -hmm. then I can relax. You know, then I can sit outside in the evening with a glass of wine at the fire, you know, because I got up early Saturday and got a little bit done and it's mm -hmm. not hanging over my head. So right. I, I, there is no magic. It's just how much do you want it? How much are you willing to go for it? And how much stick to itiveness you have for the days where you want to throw yourself, you know, down on the ground like a little kid and have, and let me tell you, that can be a good thing. Have a good old temper tantrum and then get yes. up and keep moving. Yes. That's you can ask um, my husband. I do that quite often. <laughs> yeah. This, this morning, uh, one of the things that was shared was like, you know, if you have to have some crying sessions, it's okay. Do it. Release it. It's fine. It's okay. You know, and then and just buy yourself back. something fun. You know, Lori, yeah. I hope you're doing that. After yeah. every session, go buy something silly and stupid and, and yeah, hardly any cost at all. But it's like that little reward. Like you said, you cross off another step. It makes a big difference. You deserve right. it. And so thank you all. This is really great feedback. Um, I am going to go ahead and transition and switch gears and open the floor to questions from the audience. So uh, for Alyssa and Samantha, if you're still on, in your control panel, there is a tab that says questions. So if you expand that questions tab, um, on the far right, um, there's a box with an arrow that's points diagonally and an X. So you can actually undock the questions box by clicking on that first icon that's on the far right. So it's, a, it's a, again, a square little box with the diagonal arrow kind of pointing up. You can undock the questions box and actually, you know, drag the box open to make it as big as you want um, and type in your questions and we'll go ahead and address those live. And um, I'll give you some time to do that. Um, so while we're waiting for your questions to come in, um, I am going to ask, you know, Laura, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about student services, because that was brought up quite a bit as a helpful resource um, during our conversation today. I know in the beginning for applicants, you know, applicants are working together with um, admissions representatives mm -hmm. and student services together to get them through the en enrollment process and registered for their first couple sessions. Um, what are some of the um, experience, what's the experience like for a student as a continuing student um, working with student services after that? Sure. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's it's just a matter of keeping in touch and reaching out if you need anything at all. We're here to help definitely um, with anything academic or finance related as people go through classes, whether it be, um, you know, if they're not sure who to ask, we're always here um, to help. Um, like Donna was saying earlier, if we don't know, we can definitely find out who to ask. So uh, we kind of um, do our best with all that. Um, a lot of times um, people will have questions uh, about finance or, you know, maybe they'll receive an email um, that they weren't sure, um, you know, um, what to do or whatnot. So um, we can definitely be of assistance regarding that, um, providing answers about financial aid or um, financial things or also helping them pick their next classes. Um, actually, it's funny that w Nicole and I are on here today because we are actually partners <laughs> um, like I'm her SSA and, and all that. So it's really neat that we got a chance to um, to be here together today because they do such a nice job of setting the student up with all the information they need to get started. And then we kind of take it from there and just help them know what to expect as they're financially as they're going to go forward and then continue to um, help them move forward in classes, uh, overcome any roadblocks. Because, uh, you know, it's just like any other process, it's going to have ups, it's going to have downs, but um, definitely um, it's not something that can't be done. So we just help people through whatever they're going through and uh, get to the finish line. Excellent. Yes, um, it's great that you ha that our students have that experience with your department. So it's kind of a one stop shop, I feel, at that point where they can talk to you about their financial planning and registration and maybe any other questions or concerns that they might have. Um, and like you said, you know, if it's not anything that student services is able to address, they will have the resource to be able to, you know, help the student and in and, and, and that situation. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so waiting on some questions to come in, but um, just wanted to talk a little bit about some Q&A that we had this morning. Um, some of the things that our student or our student and alumni shared this morning was, you know, kind of the uh, the flexibility and, uh, in taking these online classes and starting with one class. So um, I'm actually going to ask you, Nicole, it, you know, uh, being on the admission side of things, like, you know, kind of what you share with your students in terms of those recommendations, like starting with one class and maybe why that might be beneficial, you know, versus starting full time and, and what are some ways that they could, you know, incorporate this uh, type of flexibility into into their 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 work, you know, their work, whole work life balance um, and everything like that. So do you mind sharing a little bit? Yeah, I, I think this is a question I get a lot from students and they're like, well, what do typ typically students do? And I, I, there is no typical with Chamberlain, right? It's so student focused that we're going to take the time to have that conversation with our students and figure out what it is they need, what their concerns are, what their barriers are. You know, if they're worried about that work-life balance and they haven't been in school in 15 years and they're nervous about doing online, I'm automatically gonna say, you know, let's just start you slow. Let's take that intro course, see how it goes. You can speed up later. You know, that's the great thing about it. If you have that student who's like, hey, I need to be done in a year, then we're gonna try to set them up with two classes as long as they're comfortable doing that. So I think it's really uncovering what they're looking for and helping them to map that out so they can reach that goal so they can get through that for you know a lot of our students who maybe this is their second degree or maybe they've been a nurse for 20 plus years um, and they have never done online um, the hardest parts the getting started so oh, yeah. if that's something that they say you know you know we I asked the question you know how long have you been thinking about doing your BSN and I'll have some students who say you know like 15 years well, what's prevented you? You know, like, and it, you find out it's really just their their nervousness or their uncertainty and their fear of it you know, let's start you out slow. Let's do that intro course. Let's get you comfortable navigating. And, you know, I come with a little bit of a unique perspective because I'm also Chamberlain alumni as well. I finished our MPH program in May of 2020. So oh, um, I was somebody, thanks. I was somebody who had been out of college for 14 years and had never done online. And so like when I have that student in week one, who's like upset, I'm like, I'm just real with them. You know what? Mm -hmm. I was that student in week two crying, going, well, what was I thinking? I'm not smart enough to do this. And I did. So I think it's just being that support to help them get over that hump and get started and, you know, provide the tools so that they can feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. But that's that's just really that's uncovering so what they're looking for. So yeah. true because, yeah. you know, just having somebody that's gone through it, 
you know, we always say nobody knows the pain of nursing school other than fellow students, you know. And, and it's true, though, you guys, you provide a lot of that support, that understanding. Um, you know, my first course, I told you I, I struggled with the online stuff. It was the transitions course. I deleted my first paper and called my son-in-law hysterical crying. And he came over and went, boop, boop, and there it was again, you know. <laughs> I sent my husband to the store with 50 bucks to buy some calculator that I needed. And he called me and said, I got to put this on the charge. And I'm like, what? And he said, oh, no, this is not just a calculator. And he came home with some Texas XX2594. <laughs> and it had a computer disk that you had to watch to learn how to use it. I'm thinking it's like the kitchen compute, you know. And I'm like, what are these symbols? I, I thought, oh, my God, I'm out, out of my element. And, um, you know, you need somebody to calm you down and say, it's okay. You're not the only one. Yeah, and yeah. I think the great thing about Chamberlain, we do a good job of balancing to provide that support you need, but also to, to leaving you alone if you don't need that. And that's what I always tell my new students. Like, I'm here to help you. We can check in. We can have a conversation every day if you want to. But if you don't want that for me, just let me know. If you're good and, you know, you don't need me to hold your hand and help you, that's okay, too. And the same with student services. You know, they the program's set up where it's, it's self, you know, guided. You can do everything through your portal. You don't ever have to talk to student services after you register and start. But if you're that student that needs that support or has those questions, you have somebody you can. So it's right. really designed for people from all different backgrounds, all different types of personalities. Um, and you just kind of make it fit for you and what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. and, and Nicole, you echoed something that, you know, Donna said was just that everyone's needs are very unique. Everyone's life is very different. And so therefore exactly. their, you know, work-life balance is going to be unique to their situation. So, you know, if that's a concern of yours as a prospective student, it's something that you can, you can share those concerns with us in admissions. We can talk about your situation specifically. You know, Nicole, you're right. A lot of times students have that exact same question where they're like, well, what do nurses typically do? You know, what is, what's, what do, do they start with one class? Do they like, they want to know what's working for, you know, other nurses, which is great, you know, uh, and, but at the same time, we want to know what works best for you. And so, you know, we're definitely able to, we're more than happy to have a conversation um, with our students or prospective students about their concerns and, and um, schedule and, you know, we can make recommendations. If it is starting with one class, one of the thing that they, things that they talked about this morning was, um, the student wasn't aware that that was even an option like they thought they just had to kind of dive in and had this like set schedule and it's like no you could certainly start with one class and you can take your just one class your second session and then once you you know feel comfortable you can then double up later so i mean so it was refreshing for them to know that because they felt they had more control of you know what their schedule was going to be like and also just kind of gave them time to really assess their like or really establish their rhythm you know and be able to figure out what, what was going to work best for them um, with work, with having a family, and with um, being a student. Um, so, you know, again, we're just more than happy to provide that support um, and some, some suggestions. So you, I think the key here is this, and the trend is, you know, utilizing your resources at the end of the day. So um, one of the things that we do is we'll have you participate in a student readiness seminar. So we do talk about the resources that are available. And this is before, you know, students are starting their first session. Um, we give a live tour, like here's how you log into class, here's how you access your resource center, and here's how you'll get to your discussions and modules. Um, so, you know, we do provide those tours, um, give students early access to class as well. So this way, you know, newer students are prepared and know exactly where to go and where how to navigate everything when week one opens up. Um, so we do take the time, you know, to do that and to prepare you. So, um, so if there's, if there's, and if anyone likes to add any closing remarks, we're just going to go ahead and wrap up here. I don't have any questions that came through, but again, just want to say thank you and appreciate all of you for all the advice and feedback that you've provided. So for, for Lori and Donna or anyone really, any, any closing remarks, anything else you want to share before we wrap up? I just want to tell you that I have a younger sister who's five years younger than me. She'll kill me, but I don't care. She's 60. She's going to be 60. 
actually she is 60. See, she thinks she's not, but I know because <laughs> she's five years younger than me. And um, the year that I graduated with my MSN ED, she also graduated with her RN to BSN from Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. So she is a transplant nurse manager for Centera Hospital Systems in Tuskegee, Virginia. And she went back to get her RN to BSN because she all she heard about was how great my experience was. So I asked her the other day, you're going back for your master's? She said, nope, but you can go back for your DMP. So yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> and um, I just want to tell everybody that's out there, listen, guys, I don't want to hear how old you are, that you can't go back to school, that you only have a few more good years of work. I'm 65 and I intend to be back in school until, you know, I'm going to die with student loans. Let my kids pay them off. <laughs> but um, no, really, really. But, um, you know, because the love of learning is in you and you're a nurse and you should never stop learning. So get back in there and get your degrees and keep on moving because you can keep moving forward with Chamberlain. You've got everything you need. Awesome. I talk a lot, right? You can tell I'm a professor. <laughs> it's very valuable information, <laughs> let me tell you. I, I appreciate it. I've been very grateful to, and it's been an honor, honestly, to hear your your experience, everyone's experience all day today. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's, it's amazing to hear. I love talking to um, and learning more from students who are an alumni who have experienced Chamberlain to its fullest and just all the positive things that they've been able to walk away with. So thank you. Thank you very much for Thanks saying for everything you said. Absolutely. Lori, Absolutely. always good to see you. We'll see you again. <laughs> yeah, you too. And I just want to say um, Chamberlain is definitely there to help anyone succeed. Um, all of the professors really want to see the students succeed. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think everyone should give it a try. If you're thinking about going back to school, give it a try. You can do it. Anyone can do it. Um, and starting with one class is very doable. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot of hours a week. It's not a lot of hours a day to get the week done. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lori. Appreciate you sharing your background and experience as well. And thank you everyone for, for attending today, uh, Nicole and Laura, for your valuable uh, feedback and advice. Um, now to our students, if you're looking to apply to uh, one of our programs, go to www.chamberlain.edu and select the program of your choice. And our admissions team will be more than happy to walk you through the process. So thank you every, everyone once again, and I will give you your evenings back. Have a wonderful night and hopefully we'll see each other soon. Thank you so much. Tomorrow's graduation in North Brunswick. So that's a cool thing. Oh, have fun. Congratulations, yeah. all the graduates. Well, not me, <laughs> but the graduates. Right. First live one since 2019, so we're excited. Awesome. Thanks, all right, guys. everyone. Thank you so much. Have Thank a great you. evening. You too. Bye. -bye. Bye.